Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and we are back for part 2 of White Day a Labyrinth Named School. I've really been enjoying this game way more than I thought I would. It's kind of got really cool puzzles and like some cool ghost stories written into it. We've got a crazy janitor chasing us about the school, and we've only just sort of touched the tip of the iceberg, I think, for where this game's going, and all the crazy ghosts we can see. We're probably going to miss a ton of ghosts during this playthrough because they're very hard to get, but what I am going to do, guys, is go back and do a full sort of playthrough on my own time and find all the ghosts to show you in a separate video, as well as explaining the story as we usually do. But for this Let's Play series, we're just going to kick off where we left off after the cutscene. Without further ado, let's dive in and play part two of White Day, a labyrinth named School. Okay, so here we are, we're back in the game. Now... Oh, I can hear already the sound of the um, janitor watching. So I'm going to just turn off the light and hide here. He's looking for us as you can see. I'm going to check our map. Ah, okay, so I see. So what we need to do, we're currently in the hiking club room. I think we need to go downstairs because downstairs we can actually use the symbol that we just picked up. I think here to unlock the door. So we're going to head downstairs and use the uh, wooden symbol. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. It's this wooden token. A wooden token that has the wood symbol on it. It gives off a lucky vibe. We're going to sneak. We might need to run here. I'm going to just sneak, guys, and I'm shutting the door. Okay, now we're going to run. Wait, what's that? What's that kind of weird... Oh, is he going to come in here? He might come in. Guys, he might come in. He's there! Holy crap! Oh my god, we got jump scared. What the heck? A faint hello. There was something in that room, guys. That was, there was something in that room, but I, I don't have time to look at what it was. I think it was a ghost. We just got jump scared. And we got chased by the janitor at once. We need to go downstairs. That was very close. Come on. Leave me alone, janitor. All right, let's shut that. Let's place the symbol in here. And unlock the door to the next building. You unlocked it. Nice. Okay. Go to main building two. There we go. We escaped. Wow. That was very close. I wanted to see if it was a ghost encounter. I think there was a ghost encounter we could have had there. But obviously we didn't have time to check it out. So we've got a keypad here. I don't know what the number is for that keypad. This is the principal's office. Next to it we have the counselor's office. Can we go into the counselor's office? We can. Ooh, very nice. Let's have a look. We've got a note here. Investigation report. The mental health of the students. The anxiety of the students and their ineffective coping methods. Written by Tae Gun Lim. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering these names. I, you know, I'm not versed in Korean, so <laughs> I do apologize to any Korean viewers. Many of our students suffer from considerable anxiety about their future. This is quite natural considering their state as adolescents. However, some students are using odd methods in an attempt to cope with their anxiety issues. These odd coping methods are spreading across the school like wildfire. In a way, this brings light to the fact that these students today lack responsibility and a sense of identity. The real problem, however, is that some of these odd coping methods are taken as more than just a joke. They are turning into a fanatic religion. Students who have yet to form a solid sense of identity are more easily lured into joining these fanatic sects. One of the main coping methods these students are using is the act of calling the dead. Using a Ouija board, students attempt to call upon the dead to quell the uncertainties they face by asking the ghost questions or even to predict the future. Now at a glance it could be dismissed as an immature act of self-reassurance that can be safely ignored. However, that is not the case. When such acts are committed repeatedly, the student will often eventually lose his or her grasp on reality, and in some extreme cases, the student exhibits a full-on psychological breakdown. 
This matter must be resolved for the safety of the school, and heavy supervision is advised until a... and then there's, there's no more. So that's an investigation going into... Uh, looking into students who were using Ouija boards to communicate with the dead. Obviously this school was built on a site that was used for prisoners of war, where so there's a lot of dead people, a lot of history, uh, dark history around the school and a lot of ghosts that can be contacted by the students if they were to use a Ouija board. So yeah, interesting to note. With that said, let's head on down the hall. What the heck was that? Oh my god. There's a baby. Kind of cute, kind of creepy. Off he goes. Um, okay. Well, hopefully that's the last we see of him. Let's get our lighter out. I wanted to see if I could see the ghost in the other building. You know, where there was all the, like... Um, sort of flames and stuff, but we didn't get to see it. Oh, there's a phone. Uh, okay. That sounds like somebody in pain and distress. I don't think there's a lot we can do for them. We've got another document here. Class materials, oriental studies, interesting theory of five elements. The teacher was Vice Principal Sang Moon Lee. The theory of five elements is made up of a cycle of harmony and aversion. Harmony being an energy aiding another energy to flow better, and it is forward movement in the cycle. In contrast, aversion is where an energy is going against another energy to block its flow, and is a backwards movement in the cycle. The flow of aversion is as follows. Metal to wood, metal can cut through wood, uh, wood to earth, wood takes nutrients from the earth, earth to water, earth can block water from flowing, and water to fire as water extinguishes fire. Then fire to metal as fire melts metal and then the cycle repeats. The flow of harmony is as follows, fire and earth, fire returns to earth after being exhausted, earth and metal, metal is extracted from earth, and metal and water, metal becomes the source for water. And water and fire as wood burns to create fire and then the cycle resumes from the first. In the cycle of harmony there is a hidden principle that all wrongs will be righted. This can be said to be a true reflection of the depth of Eastern philosophy. Okay, well that is heavy stuff. And I kind of get what they're saying with it, but at the same time it's kind of in one ear and out the other. So, uh, hopefully that's not going to factor into a puzzle. We've got a pin here. A small pin. It looks like it can be pinned somewhere. Okay. I'm just checking that there's nothing I've missed. Oh, there's a document here. A faculty notice. Attention, all teachers working night shifts. The passcode to the principal's office has been changed due to a recent leak of a previous passcode. Okay, so this is what we need. The passcode is on the chalkboard in the student department office, written with a piece of special chalk that is invisible under fluorescent light, of course. Of course it's going to be invisible chalk. Uh, the principal does not approve of others entering his office while he's away, so please use the passcode only in cases of emergencies or special circumstances. Okay, so... There must be something in the principal's office. That's where we need to go then. Let's have a look at our map. Okay, the student department office. So where's that? It's on floor 2F, so we need to go to 2F next. Okay. Oh, we've got what seems to be pictures of the different teachers at the school up here. What's this? Oh look, we can move these. I'm guessing it's like a puzzle, right? Who knows, who knows. That's something for another day. What the heck? This is a weird room. Don't know why I'm shutting the door. Oh, there's a note. Truth finder. These are rumours. So this is from uh, a local newspaper. Let's learn about Morse code. Morse code is a communication code invented and developed by Samuel Finney Breeze Morse that can compose and send sentences. This noise is really throwing me off reading. Really going over my head all this. 
I'm no good with stuff like Morse code. We've got a school coin here though. Let's take that. And um, there's nothing in that drawer, but I think there's a key on top. Yeah, look, lost and found room key. So where's the lost and found room? Oh, it's on the second floor, which we're going to already anyway. Cool. Let's um, let's head up to the second floor then, I guess. I suppose we should check every room though. Holy crap, that scared me. That is just a, uh, you know, the human anatomy model that you get in schools. What's this? Glasses? Alright, I don't understand that. I'm sure that comes in handy at some point. What's that noise? Oh, there's a paper crane. We got one of those earlier. So now we've got two paper cranes. I wonder if there's something we need to do with all these paper cranes, you know? What's this? We've got like a jacket here. Is there anything I could do with this jacket? <gasps> Ooh, student department office key. Nice. This is this is very good, guys. We've got a key. Let's go upstairs then. I really want some kind of a save point, and we've got one. Oh, and we've got a note. What's this? A document. Occult Club Announcement. That sounds spooky. Event announcement from the Occult Club. <laughs> the most joyous club at school, I'm guessing. With the start of a new term, we have prepared an event for everyone. Here's where the goths hang out. We will give out a small prize for anyone who can solve this quiz and bring the hidden treasure to our club. The treasure is sleeping under a place covered by the dust of erased knowledge. And it can only be woken by the hand that handshakes everything. So that's obviously some kind of riddle. The hidden treasure is a clue to one of the latest ghost stories of the school that's quickly gaining fame. Whoever finds it first can have it. No one has been able to collect the full series so far, and therefore it is a high commodity collectible among students. It's a great opportunity to get both the clue for the latest ghost story and a handsome prize. We hope all of you participate. P.S. If by any chance you collect all of the clues, to the ghost stories through this event, then please contact the president of the occult club. We have actually been collecting these ghost stories. We've got three so far. So there we are. Now, I think I'm going to save the game at this point. Okay, guys? So let's save it here again. I've only got three chances to save left because I've uh, been picking up those felt tip pens, you know? Let's check in all of these. One day I'm going to open one of these and there's going to be a ghost inside. I think with that we'll go upstairs and use the key we just picked up. So let's have a quick look at our map. We basically want to go to 2F and we have the student department. I think we just got the key for that, right? The student department. And also the lost and found room. So let's go up and see if we can access those rooms now. Oh look, we've got another one of these symbols. It's the same barrier I saw in main building one. And a spooky picture. Picture piece two. Part of a ripped picture. It seems other pieces are needed to make out the whole picture. That's kind of creepy. Creepy picture for a school. Now, these are actually already open. What's this? Another note. Treasure hunt. So this is just a normal note. I found out a new secret about the music teacher's hidden treasure. One of the paintings in the main building is said to have a key inside it that unlocks the room. I'm so close to winning this treasure hunt that I can almost taste it. So I wonder if this is a picture piece we just picked up, if that's what it's referring to. If we put that picture back together, we might get a secret. These are all locked. Oh, wait, what is this? Ah, this is where we put the picture piece. Yeah, we need other picture pieces. This is where we rebuild the picture. Also, what's this? A tranquilizer, nice. I think we use the tranquilizers if ghosts like step up to us and we get scared. Now, we can't get into this door. 
Ah, I know why. We need to get in through here. We have actually got the key, I think. Yep, there we go. We unlocked it, nice. Anybody home? Any ghosts in the house? Oh, we got a felt tip pen. I'll take that. We've got a locked box. I don't think we have the code to this currently. Also, what is this? Oh, this is, this seems to be symbols um, translated into English. So these symbols are Korean numbers, I think. And that's what they mean in English. So that's one, two, three. I think what I'm going to do, guys, is take a picture of this on my phone. A little bit of uh, inside baseball, so to speak, for you here. This is what I'm doing outside of a video. I'm going to take a picture out of my phone. If we have a puzzle which requires us to use these numbers, we'll know what they mean now, right? We haven't got a key for that. We can't go through here. I think this is the lost and found room here that we were heading towards. And we have got the key for that. Let's unlock it. There we go. Oh, we've got a cutscene. Oh, it's for baby. Why? What the heck? Give me your lights, please. <sighs> Light, thank you. We've got a felt tip pen. Yay, we've got six save opportunities now. And we've got a note. This is a rumor. The dusty stationery paper. Please forgive me for saying goodbye in person. This is to G1 Kim. I'm being forced to leave all because of a sick rumour. Should you hear a rumour about me, please do not pay attention to it. It's a story made up by people plotting against me. Once I leave, I'm sure you'll all be bored because there'll be no one left to entertain your ridiculous theories and ideas. For me, I'll be sad because there'll be no one to understand my world of art. To ease the sadness of saying goodbye, I leave you a farewell gift. It's my painting of you holding your first art piece. I think you said you created that piece to hide something important, right? Anyway, uh, I wish you good health and good luck in the future. So wait, is this referring to the painting that we're, we're collecting pieces for? Is there anything else in this room or is that it? Oh, there's a vase. There's a stack of unclaimed items collecting dust. Can we not take them? Maybe it's just an empty room aside from that note. I can't see anything else guys, so I'm gonna leave. I do remember something about a chalkboard we had to find on this floor, right? Was it in this room where the num- yeah, with the numbers, I think- I think we might need to be in here. But do you remember it was like, the numbers can't be seen under light or something like that? Yeah, look, it, it is. So, we can actually see the numbers when we turn out the light. I remember that note that we read at the start. So this is what these numbers mean. Okay, cool. Um, Basically, I think we're gonna have to try and work out like which of these symbols matches on the paper to get a code. Obviously the code is four digits though. So these look like they've each got three symbols in them which would give us 12 did 12 numbers. We don't want 12 numbers, we only need four. So we're obviously taking one of these symbols from each of these to get the code, but which one? Each of these characters, if you look at them, the middle one, it's the same on every one. So it's obviously not going to be that, because that would be just the same, the same one each time. <gasps> Guys, I've just worked out what it is. I've just been looking at this and none of this matches exactly, and I know why now. But now we've got the janitor really close. Look, if we go to the first one here, and we look at this, and we look at this, if we remove that from there, we have just the two lines there, and look, that matches up with the two lines on the paper and it leaves us with a number eight. So that first symbol is eight. If we remove this one from here, we get rid of this bit here, this bit here, this bit here, and this bit here, so we just have one line, which is a one. The third symbol is like a J and we've got two marks here. We need to get rid of the two marks here and get rid of the J, which would be just the line there. 
So we'd have a T there, like a, well, like a line there and a line there, which makes two. So it's 812, and then the final one, this one is one that I'm not so sure on. We would remove this bar here entirely by the look of it, because there's three lines and a line there, three lines and a line there. And also, it looks like we'd remove this bar, which means it would just leave us with the top part. The top part most looks like a four. I'm gonna go with that, guys. 8124, I think it is, or 8129 or something. Um, we need to get downstairs now without that janitor finding us is the problem. So... Man, I don't know where he is. But I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go. Where the heck is he? Guys, I don't even know where that guy is. I'm just gonna run. Screw that guy. Right, let's put in the code. Um, so I said it was eight, one, two, four. Yes, we're in. Unfortunately, we've got this guy here first. Oh, and he hit us. Guys, we're gonna have to hide in the toilets. The code worked, but Please shut the door! Are you kidding me? Oh, man, he wouldn't shut the door then, that was nuts. Oh, we survived though, we survived. That was absolutely crazy. He just came for us. Look at him searching. Okay, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, good. We're battered and bruised, but we're alive. So, I say we heal up. Let's... See, we've got two healing items here. So, there we go. We've just got to wait till he goes now. Okay, I think we're good to, to sort of explore again. We need to be really careful of that guy, though. He's on the prowl. I'm running. Screw that guy. I'm just getting out of here, guys. We're gonna go to the principal's office now. We've opened it. Good. Can we not barricade it, put up a chair against the door or something? We've got a document here. It says, water disconnection report. The water to the main building has been disconnected due to an undetermined reason. However, a single sink in the science lab on the third floor of main building two still has running water. We need to remember that. The students seem to find this disturbing. A major repair will be conducted to rectify our current water problem. Okay, so we know where we can get water if we need to. Please don't come in here. Guys, I'm gonna hide at the back of a room behind this desk and hope he doesn't come in. I do think the janitor's a little bit frustrating when you're just trying to solve puzzles and stuff. He's like all over us. Is he gonna go? I think he's not looking for us anymore. We've got a document here as well. The principal's document. Um, so this is Jim Wong Kim. Commit suicide on school grounds in 2000. This is about a student. No family or friends appeared after his death. Ah, so yeah, this is a note about Jim Wong Kim. Uh, seems antisocial and exhibited eccentric behavior from the start. Created and spread rumors about a conspiracy in the school. Showed some signs of paranoia. I'm not surprised with a killer janitor on the loose all the time. Even if it's not haunted, you know, you've got that sort of crazy thing happening in the school. Installed a lock on the music supply room for his exclusive use and would hide the piano chair key so nobody else could find it. Oh no, this is the music teacher it's talking about, not a student. So this is the music teacher whose ghost now haunts the music room. He was being closely monitored around the time of his death. The possibility of murder cannot be ruled out, but given the weight of evidence found, it is most likely that he committed suicide. Okay. Then we've also got Na Young Han, who's born in 1980. Female in senior year, homeroom 11. 
a top student her first two years, but her grades began to fall when she entered the third year. The cause for her grades slipping was not found. She did not appear to have issues at school or home. She was found dead in the school, lacking any evidence for murder. Her death was ruled strictly a suicide by hanging. So this is the this is obviously the girl that we saw hanging earlier. And then the final one is an unknown person of unknown date of birth, but they were female, and we don't know the address either. This is a special note, a delusional woman who began wandering around the school two or three years ago, will sometimes trespass onto school grounds, but does not show any concerning behaviour. She may be involved with the accident three years ago, but there is no evidence linking her. Um, exhibits a particular sensitivity to alarms, both fire and security, they cause her to have seizures. I wonder if this is like a ghost we're going to have to fight and we need to remember this, alarms to, to you know, defeat the ghost. In fact, I wonder if like all of these notes sort of give us clues on how to defeat these ghosts. We've got a drawer here, it's locked with a device. Okay. So we've got a wooden handle, a handle made of wood. It looks like it can be fitted with something to unlock a place you couldn't open before. It looks like these blocks can be moved, but I don't know how. Unless we need to turn on the lights. Maybe that's it. Ah, uh, yes, look. Now we've got the lights on, we can examine the desk a bit better. Okay, so I think we need to match up these blocks so they make a pattern, right? Is for like, have we got a clue to this? Because this seems a bit abstract. Ah, oh, wait. We maybe we make it match up like this. That's for pattern how it's meant to be, right? Let's try it again. So, I think that was like this, maybe. They're all facing this way. Yes, we unlocked it. Sweet. We've got a videotape. A videotape found in the principal's office with no label. Oh, <laughs> well, that's kind of an elaborate and high-tech, uh, I don't know, device he's got in his office. Especially for an old school like this. Big old monitor system, okay. So what are we doing here? Oh, we can see the janitor limping about with his baseball bat on the prowl. So, what's he doing? Something is hidden in the faculty office. Oh my god, he's going to come in, isn't he? Please don't come in right now. I need to check our map. So the faculty office is next door to us. I guess that's where we need to go next then. So what we need to do is very quietly sneak next door to where that janitor has just hidden the key. Is he outside is the question. He's, he is, but he's quite far away. We might be okay here, guys. If I just sneak in. Shut the door behind us. Right. Now where did he hide that key? It was somewhere around here, right? There it is. Faculty office 2 key. Nice. So. Now we have that. I actually think the best thing to do is maybe to aggro him. And um, get him to chase us through this room and shut him into the room. So we're going to faculty office 2 here on the second floor. We'll save it as well before we get there. He has gone now though. Let's go upstairs guys. Is he coming downstairs? I don't know if he's upstairs or downstairs, it's really hard to tell sometimes because the sound isn't like that sort of like telling. There we go, we can unlock the door. In we go. Shut that down, turn on the light. 
Ah, <sighs> right. There's something over there that we need to pick up. I can already see it. What is this? Do I need to do anything with this? Back mask tape. Something's been recorded on this tape, but its recording is backwards and indecipherable. And here she is again, our oh, friend. Oh, if it isn't my nemesis. Okay, well, nemesis then, I guess. Where's the girl you've been desperately following around? Like a puppy dog. She's got a chip on her shoulder about that, hasn't she? Okay, so we can say, I've been waiting for you, or what's your problem? I'll say, I've been waiting for you. Let's, let's kind of play to her a little bit and see if we can get a good ending out of this game. <laughs> Are you flirting with me right now? So what? If I don't trust you completely... Oh. <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> Let go of me! I was totally fine without your help. That guy does not say a lot. What is wrong with this building? Why does it shake all the time? Because it's haunted. Well, I'm out of here. You can leave or stay and find so young. Whatever. That was a brief encounter. I think what I'm going to do is explore this room a bit more, actually. State of school reports, inappropriate rumors in school. So this is sort of telling people off for games like treasure hunting and stuff. Games like treasure hunting are becoming a quick spreading fad amongst the students. But this is no average treasure hunt. It's to find the CD which belongs to the deceased music teacher who committed suicide on school properties last year. The rumour is that Mr Kim, the music teacher, had left the CD before his death which contains his last words and the secret of the school. Now according to students, the clues Mr Kim had left are being found periodically, raising the credibility of the rumour. This rumour has come to the point where it's disrupting classes. Some students are even known to bet huge amounts of money on this. All homeroom teachers are advised to be aware of the situation and pay special attention in regards to this issue. Okay, so we need to find that CD, is what I get from that. Let's go into this room here. This is the lounge area, I think. We've got a key. A key! Yay! Science lab key! And we actually needed to go to the science lab because we heard that's the only place we can get water from and I think that's probably going to be something we need to know. So I guess we're going to that next. This key unlocks the science lab in main building too. So what floor is the science lab on? Ah, look! Science lab is on floor 3 so it's just one floor up. We've also got a document, a note in the faculty lounge. Get rid of a broken stereo system in the music supplies room. The rumour that the broken stereo plays by itself is causing even more chaos in the student community, which is already in disarray. The students won't even enter the music room. Since it belonged to Ji Wong Kim, who killed himself last year, put it away with the rest of his personal artefacts in the lost and found room. Floor 3, here we come. He's up here again. Let's, I've got an idea. We could have saved it up here as well, that's so annoying. I'm actually gonna search this bathroom to see if there's anything in here. Oh look, we've got a 30 kilogram weight. Now we had a one gram weight earlier. So I wonder what we're gonna need these weights for. He's just outside, I think. Yeah, he's right there. So, let's hide under here. Is he going to come into this bathroom is my question. Yeah, he look, he runs in. Man, that guy is relentless. I kind of wonder if we can like escape and like lock him in. <laughs> well, we probably can't lock him in, but you know what I mean, shut the door. I hate how he's always on the floor that we're on, you know, like it's like he knows that that guy's going to need to go to floor three next, so I'm going to be there. All right, screw this. I'm not going to hide forever. I 
hate this so much. Okay, good. We can get inside here. I don't know what this uh, room is. Is this a science room? Yeah, it's a science lab. Nice. Okay, let's just chill. I feel like he knows we're here. Maybe if we just hide down here. No, 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 no. I'm not in here. Look, the eye is going wild. He knows we're around here. Now he's kind of like cooling off. He's like, okay, I'm not so sure actually. Maybe I made a mistake. That's right. You made a mistake, my friend. There's nobody here. So the question is, where are we going in this room? Oh. Who's there? Don't come any closer. So it's this girl again. Don't be scared, it's just me. I'm just going to say that. Is it really you? It's too dark to see well. Surely you can see me though. It's not that dark. School feels really strange tonight. What's that? <laughs> Did you just hear something? <laughs> I heard nothing. Turn on the light! Uh okay, it sounds like there's a ghost in here. I must do it. Oh my god. <laughs> Actually is a ghost. That was scary. That was weird. What was she doing in here? Um, what should we say? I'll say, uh, are you okay to her? Yeah, I'm all right. I was just a little surprised. It's a good thing we're here together, though. I do want to know who that was as well, though. This school is so old. It's always scary in here. But tonight, I think it's even worse. They say many people committed suicide here. Apparently, it was at its worst when the school was new. They had to use talismans and even called for an exorcism. My old music teacher used to tell me this stuff. He was interested in this sort of thing. That is, until all of a sudden... He killed himself in that music room. Oh. What was that? Tell me. Did you hear a piano just now? I heard a it's piano key, from yeah. The music room. You go inside first. <laughs> I love that. You go inside first. No, you go inside first. Why don't you go inside, hey? Could you go check for me? I'll go and check. It's fine. Why not? Um so, where is the music room? Let's have a look at our map. It's just here. So we are actually really next, really close to it. And it's not locked, which is good. Oh, that's not good. We've got dripping blood on the keys. Okay, let me just explore this room before we go over to that piano. We've got a note here. Mysterious note. An upside down clock pendulum. His voice shall be the key to unlocking the secret of music appreciation. Right. Okay. Um, so we need to get a code to open this. There's so many codes in this game. I guess we just interact with this uh, piano and see what's going on. Oh, we have to play that tune back, don't we? We've got five keys and basically the, we have to replicate that music we was just playing. So let's listen to it again. See, so it's like da, 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 da. This is going to be really hard for me. I'm not musically gifted. Oh, 
Finally. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I had to look up a guide for that. <laughs> I couldn't do it, I couldn't work it out. I had to, I had to Google it. Because I was here for like literally 10 minutes and I was like, I can't be here all day. Um, we got the piano bench key. I had to look up a guide, I'm not gonna be able to complete this game without looking up a guide. But you know what, that puzzle was tricky and now we've got the key, I'm pretty happy. Let's unlock this. Look at this, we've got a picture piece from it. So now we've got two picture pieces. I don't know how many we need. Hey, Ji Shun. Where have you been? I've been looking everywhere for you. She's a bully. I is that so? I didn't know. Sorry. Let's get going. He's too busy chasing after so young. All right. She's really got a thing about us liking so young. She must be super jealous. Come on. What are you doing? Um, uh, wouldn't it be smarter to stay together? Don't you get it? He doesn't care at all about us. And even if you're in the same class as him, can he be trusted? Well, he probably doesn't know his way around here yet. So what? We don't know him at all. All right. Why is she being so mean? I don't Look get at it. This. Fine. Do what you want. It's easier for me if I don't have to babysit anybody. She's just gonna die, isn't she? You. I'll be watching you. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now we're with. I can't even remember her name. We're What's with this person. Nothing's the matter. Come on, like follow me. Let's. Uh... I want to see if there's anything else in this room. Because... Can we... Oh, wait, what's this? Soy milk, nice. I'm, I guess we can't get inside here yet, right? Is there any way we can get inside this? Wow, she just appeared. Um, <laughs> kind of scary. Uh, let's have a look in our backpack. Essential items. Picture piece one. This is what we just picked up. It has some numbers written on the back. Here we go, 1328. Is this for code for this? 1328. I unlocked it. There we go, we're making progress. Just need to have a bit of space, please. Okay, right. Um, now, what do we need to do? Is this sitting in here? Oh, look, there's a CD up. There's the CD we needed. A CD is in the CD tray. Can she help us get this? Uh, where are we going? To get this CD. Can you boost me? Just stand on my hands and reach it. Look. We're so close to it. Oh. Picture piece free, though. A ripped off picture. It seems the other pieces are needed to make up the whole picture. Do we have enough pieces for the picture now? I really want this CD, but I don't think we can reach it right now. Let's go out and see what else is on this floor. We've got something here. A document. Oh, it's a ghost story. Here's another ghost story for you guys. Okay, so this is find my body for me. The weather was so hot that it made it hard to breathe, and the cicadas would not stop chirping. The foreman in charge of construction to connect the new building to the old found everything irritating. In his opinion, it was a pointless project, but he wasn't going to complain since it was paid work. The sun blazed even hotter after lunch, and the heat waves rose off the asphalt. The workers protested that it was too hot to work. The foreman was both jealous and spiteful of the brash attitude of the workers. However, he agreed it was too hot to work. The foreman ordered his workers to take a break. No progress was being made anyway, and if a worker happened to get a heat stroke, it would just make matters worse. Everyone found a spot in the shade and slept soundly. Then something happened while everybody was deep in sleep. A loud cracking sound echoed around the campus. It sounded like the scaffolding had crashed through the safety net. Still drowsy from their nap, the workers paid no attention to it and went back to sleep. It was a different matter for the foreman. If it was indeed a problem with the safety net, it would be his responsibility. He yelled at his workers to check out the safety net, but they pretended like they didn't hear him. Annoyed, the foreman realised that he had to check it out himself. The workers, who were debating whether or not to get up, were glad that the foreman had left without them. Suddenly, the foreman yelled, and then was cut off, leaving an eerie silence. 
The workers jumped up and rushed to the foreman. The foreman was frozen in shock, staring at a terrible sight. Where the scaffolding had fallen through the safety net was the dead body of a woman. The woman's corpse had no head. Ugh. The foreman and the workers instantly recognised the dead woman as someone who worked in a local restaurant. From the chomped stump of her neck, dark red blood was spewing out, soaking into the ground. The foreman and their workers kept their mouths shut and moved quickly. It was the first time they had worked together so harmoniously. Despite searching everywhere, they could not find the missing head. In the end, they buried the body in cement and sent it to the waste facility. Man, this is morbid, so they covered it up. It seemed like they did a perfect job covering up what had happened. No one would ever know what had happened aside from themselves. For some reason though, strange accidents kept on happening after the incident. Workers were injured much more frequently than before. This slowed progress on construction, and a rumour spread among the workers that there was a ghost at the site. The foreman fumed with anger and ordered his men to keep their mouths shut. Then, a pulley fell from the fourth floor and crushed a worker to death. While his body had been mangled by the pulley, his head was strangely unharmed. The foreman became terrified and decided to turn himself into the police. Even then, rumours persisted that a floating head could sometimes be seen. Eventually, the construction work was complete, despite the slow progress. Oh, this is for building of a school as well, isn't it? So this happened in the school, on the site of the school. When the school reopened after the summer break, they were shocked to find the dead woman's head inside the garden. They said that the head looked as if it had just been cut off the body, despite the fact that it had been out in the heat of the summer for weeks. Oh man, that is morbid. That's another ghost story down though. What do you think of that one, hey? Did it scare you? Uh, you think Sung A is okay? She's fine. I'm sure she can deal with everything herself. All right, guys, I think the perfect thing to do... What was that? The creaking of a floorboard. I don't know if we can get caught now. I imagine as we've got company with us, we can't be caught by the janitor. There was a student who killed herself with poison in the upstairs art room. There was somebody in the upstairs art room that killed themselves. And it seems that student was pregnant at the time. <gasps> the baby! The school tried to say it was just a rumor. Oh my god, okay. So we need to go up to the art room. Guys, there's gonna be something in the art room upstairs. I'm gonna save the game before we do anything. I think what we wanna do now we've saved is go downstairs and see if we can put those picture pieces into the picture. I think it's a true story. You think it's a true story? Well, we're not going up to the art room just yet, so don't worry. We're going downstairs. Look, there's the pit where we got the picture piece one, and then we should put that into, I think, here. Yeah, there we go. This is where we need to put the final picture into. Um, so let's place the picture pieces. Nice, it worked. It came together. It's a picture of a man holding a vase. We saw a vase, didn't we? In the room that the baby was in, the lost and found room. So maybe we need to go to the lost and found room next? I'm gonna run there. I'm hoping that the janitor isn't about, so I can run about. Um, here's the vase. Yeah, we can take it now, look. The vase from the teacher's uh, portrait. Something rattles inside. Ooh, what's that? Stereo remote, a remote control used for stereo systems. Wait, maybe we can get the CD now. Because we saw the CD in the stereo, didn't we, in the music supply room. So let's go back up to the music supply room and see if we can access that CD. Right, here we go. We're back in the music room. And now, hopefully, we can interact with the stereo. Yep. There we go. We've got the CD. The CD that was found in the music room, it seems to have belonged to the dead music teacher. It feels kind of heavy for a CD, and that's because it's got a key on the back. The art room key. The key that unlocks the art room. Ah, so we couldn't have gone to the art room anyway. Right, to the art room then. Let's go. That blood is still dripping from the ceiling. <gasps> That's probably the art room, isn't it, as well? Oh, man. We've got to go up there now, guys. 
I'm kind of freaked out a little bit. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Let's go up. We've got to face our fears that we've got to go up to the art room. On floor four. I hear a baby crying around here. We've already seen it. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's go and check out this art room then. There's the baby again. Where's he? He's going into a room full of vases. Oh! I'm not sure if this is good or not. Wow, okay. Um, I guess you heard that, right? Where is the art room? Okay, this is a biology lab. The art room is just down the hall. Can we go into the biology lab? I feel like I want to have a little check around before we go straight to that uh, art room. What's this? Ooh. You just light the Bunsen burner. School coin. Nice. Anything in here? Any chemicals that would be good for ghost hunting? Oh, we got a preserved spider. A scary looking preserved spider. Even touching it is terrifying. Why would you want to touch it? I'm guessing we can't do anything with that. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Ready? We're going to the art room. Okay, so in we go, I guess. We've got the key. Let's unlock it. This is the art room I was talking about earlier. I've always found that kiln eerie. It's like a crematorium with burning corpses, right? So something up with that, that kiln. Locked. Oh my god. That is freaky, guys. <gasps> There's a statue. We can finally get the statue. Look at that, that is horrendous, that giant baby. Okay, um, well, we've got a timer as well. Five minutes, 50, let's turn on the light. Got something over here. Oh, a school coin. And something over here. Felt tip pen, nice. So we need to get the statue back to that baby, I think. Art term uh, exam guide. Instructions. To complete on schedule, create the clay doll following the instructions below. Materials. Use special educational clay purchased at school. Method. Knead the clay to form a certain shape. Dry in a cool place. Use the electric kiln to fire it and then cool it slowly under running water. Ah, so maybe we get the doll from downstairs and put it in the kiln and then call it off in the science lab because we were talking earlier, weren't we, about how the science lab had that uh, running water. It was the only place with running water. And I guess we know why now. We've only got five and a half minutes to do this, so we need to get that doll first by going down to floor one. Um, I'm kind of just happy that, like... Oh, no, it's floor two, wasn't it? The lost and found. Yeah, I'm kind of happy that we haven't got the uh, janitor running about while we have to do this, because that would be really frustrating. So, I think this is the lost and found, right? Yep. There's our doll. Dry clay doll. It looks bone dry, yes. Yeah, so we need to put it in the kiln to finish it. And then we need to put it under running water, and I guess this is what we need to give to the baby. Because it seems like it really wanted it earlier, didn't it? It was like reaching up for it on the top shelf. I hate these timed puzzles because I'm always scared that there's going to be a, you know, one that comes along and I'm not going to understand it. Like, so far they haven't been too bad, but... The time limit certainly sucks. Right, here we go. Um, put it in the kiln then. Here we go. Close it up. Fire it up. Here we are. We're getting somewhere. I'm glad that worked because if that had not have worked, I would not have <laughs> had a sort of a fallback plan, really. OK, 
Okay, so we've got our fired doll and it says a clay doll fired red in the kiln. It should be called under running water, yes. Yeah, so just like we thought, and just as the note on the blackboard told us, we need to go downstairs to call it off now. So we need to go to the science lab, I think, on floor three. Um, yes. So it's one of these sinks now. This one. That's done it. Is this finished now? It is. A finished clay doll. It's shaped like a woman. I'm guessing this must have been like a representation of a child's mother who he lost or so. Wait, where are we going? This room. Do we approach him? Do we have to like approach him and give the doll to it? I don't know. Oh. Okay. He's banging on the floor. Oh, we have to dodge him. I hate these quick time events. Here we go, give him the doll. Nice. I think that's it. I think we I think we completed it. Wow. That was quite the uh, boss battle. We've got a note over here now. It's an ownerless diary. Let's have a look at this. I'm not going to read all of this right now because it's been a very long episode. I'm just going to skim through it, guys. Um, and you can read it if you want to pause it and read it. But this seems to be, from what I can tell as I'm going over it, from the mother of the child. Her boyfriend got her pregnant in high school and... Um, let's have a look. What, how did this end? Yeah, look. With sense of dread, I ran a pregnancy test. The result wasn't what I had hoped it would have been. Scary to have a new life inside me. His reaction was unexpectedly cold and scary. He even threatened it would never see me again if I don't lose the baby. So the boyfriend was horrible. Didn't want to know her after she was pregnant. Uh, I can't stop looking at the cover of the art book. It's a picture of a clay doll of a woman and her baby holding hands. Okay, so yeah, that's why we got the, the clay doll for the baby. That explains it. Okay, I'm going to check in there now. Is it... <gasps> yeah, look! The mother and baby clay doll. A clay doll in the shape of a mother and her baby holding hands. So that must have been what the uh, student made for her son while she was in high school. And then we've got an earth token now. A wooden token with the earth symbol on it gives us a lucky vibe. We like those lucky vibes. So yeah, our next episode will use that token and go to the next area. I do want to save it now, however. I don't know where our like compadre went though. Our little friend. Seems she's gone somewhere else. So I think what I'll do is go downstairs now and save it. Thanks guys for sticking with me on this longer episode. I am going to save the game and um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do now is end the episode and then in the next episode we'll continue by using the earth token to go to the next building. I don't know how far through the game we are. I have been making longer episodes because I feel like sometimes with games I'm not sure how well they're going to do on the channel. I just do longer episodes so that we get this game done quicker but obviously you guys who are into it probably enjoy that because you have like a long ass episode to watch to chill to on an evening or get scared to on an evening. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed part two of White Day. I'm really enjoying this game. I can't wait to sort of go ghost hunting after I complete the game and find there's loads of ghosts and we haven't found many of them at all. So I can't wait to dive into that sort of aspect of the game. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the video today, leave me a comment down below, hit that like button and of course subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I'll be back in a few days with the next part of White Day. Thanks for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.